There's the old man, 727 with Piscopo, 877-970-2999. I see your fine phone calls, but we're going to clear these 50,000 watts for Mr. Steve Adubato, PBS anchor, columnist, New Jersey political analyst, author of the book Lessons in Leadership, I'm working constantly at West Point doing inspirational speeches up there, running seminars. Steve, you just don't stop, buddy. I love you. I love you. Keeping us all young, my friend. Yeah, I'll be in Vegas this weekend. Uh, no. <laughs> are you really going? Come on, you no, know no. how are you? Nice no, to no. see you, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Where are you from? Hey, Steve, no. um, so what did I see you? You were just doing an NJIT. You did a big seminar over there. When, yesterday? Uh, no, last week they opened up. The, I teach over at NJIT. And they opened up the uh, Martin Tuckman School of Management because Mr. Martin Tuckman gave, let's just say, a few dollars to NJIT, and so his name is on the School of Business over there. And, uh, yeah, we celebrated and cut the ribbon there and had a little seminar. Well, That's then, what happens when you give a few million, Joe. <laughs> I know. You know, my, my Uncle Ben, rest his soul, went to the North College of Engineering, which turned into the New Pretty Jersey cool. Institute of Technology, and in the 1930s, and a year he went to, for, it was a chemical engineer as an Italian back in the day. I told you that, too, and he had to change the vowel at the end of his name to get a job with Esso at the time, because, uh, you know, they didn't want to hire Italians. How about that, Steve, out of bottle with the vowel you know at the end of your name? In a few years, Joe? Well, yeah, well. The Joe Piscopo School of Media <laughs> at Rutgers... Yeah. Yeah. The State University of New Jersey. That's and I it. see us all cutting the ribbon. It is. And my ex wife making million, the bro. donation. Yeah, my ex wife making million. the donation. It ain't going to be me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to be me. Are you kidding me? Hey, I'll be speaking there, Joe. For, for, I'm going to do a pro bono. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask for a freebie. You know I will, man. Hey, Steve, um, Trump, uh, Governor Christie, you can't make it up. Last night again? The, oh, my gosh. That Michigan. Son of a gun. He, don't tell me he talked about his steaks and his water and his wine. Don't tell he, me he did he, that in his speech. It was the best. It was the best because he, not all, no, listen, not because Mitt Romney nails him on all the failed businesses. Oh, Mitt, well, he's back. Boy, is he well, relevant. I know, I know, I couldn't believe it. So, but then the dollar got up last night. If you didn't stay up late, and was Steve's I alluded did, I to, it all. no, no, he, he, I'd say that if you're listening, you didn't. Steve's talking about the Donald before he goes up in true Trump fashion. He puts out steaks. He puts out the Trump water. He puts out the Trump wine. You God, come on, Steve. You gotta love this. You gotta love the craziness of it all. I, I, I'm sitting there saying, as as a let's just say. Uh, as a student of public speaking and communication, yeah, yeah. and I always say, listen, there are keys to making a speech, either a concession speech or a victory speech, and I'm watching. There are keys to doing it right. Trump, he's got the water. He's got not the wine. Yes, he has the water and the wine, and I got yep. a little nervous yeah, as a yeah, Catholic. Yeah. He had the water and the wine. <laughs> yeah. He had the steak and a few other things, and he goes, listen, Mitt Romney accused me of failing in all these businesses. All right, look at the water I have. Here's my wine. Here's yeah. my vodka. Yeah. And let's vodka, bring out yeah. the steaks. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, this is not the speech you make <laughs> after you win. And he goes on for an hour. Then he holds a press conference. And then I say to myself, wait a minute. But none of the networks are leaving the Trump speech yeah, and the press point. conference good with point. the steaks and the water and the wine. He's controlling the entire thing. Good. Great point, Steve. That's a great observation, you being the professional that you are. Because, you know, I didn't even think about that. That's exactly right. No one left. And, no and, one left. And, and and he's on he's on all the liberal media. He <laughs> owns it. He owns it. It's so interesting. <laughs> but now, look, look about, now you're, you, and leave. I know. Listen, you're personal friends of uh, Chris Christie, and we, uh, you know, and I, I'm a fan of the governor as well. And we'll we'll bust chops when, when you know when we have to. But here, they're saying Chris Christie resigned. He shouldn't have gone. All the newspapers came against Chris Christie. He shouldn't have gone and backed Donald Trump. But you know Chris Christie when you sit down, and you're a personal friend of Chris. I'm more like an acquaintance. I mean, is he hurting himself, or will Chris Christie go on when Trump gets in, be the attorney general, and be a formidable power in the United States of America? Why don't you ask me seven questions, Joe? <laughs> one, one. Because uh, I know that you will assimilate every single one. So put and it this will... way. Do, do I disagree with uh, the governor's endorsement of Donald Trump? Yes. However, I understand why he did it. I understand for him why he did it. I understand that, let's just say, after the last debate that the governor was in, which in which he showed how incredibly good he is on stage, he eviscerated, I like using that word, uh, Marco, what's his last name? Frank, is Frank still there in the studio? Rubio. Yeah, he eviscerated Marco Rubio. Uh, Marco! 
Yeah. Yes, who won't be there much longer. Um, he was not going to do it. He was not going to endorse Rubio. He was not going to endorse Cruz and his friend John Kasich. Not really going to be that relevant. The bottom line was Trump was the card for him to play. I don't like Trump. Not a fan. He's going to be the nominee. And Chris Christie did what was practical for him and his political future. Um, bottom line is it doesn't matter who likes him or doesn't like him in New Jersey. Chris Christie came back. Chris Christie's going to try to take care of business, as difficult as it is in New Jersey. There's a transit strike that's looming uh, on March the 13th. The governor doesn't control that, but he influences what happens there. you got the situation on the roads with the transportation trust fund going out of business. you got a pension crisis. Who the heck would want to come back? But the reality is he has a job to do, and whether people like it, like him or not, he's going to do that job. And he's not going anywhere. He's 733 with Steve Adubato and Piscopo. Hey, Steve, so, so inside line, inside line. I was talk, I talked to uh, Mr. Cavuto uh, about this on uh, Fox Business when we were on Fox News. Listen, so, so Mitt Romney does his ridiculous speech, goes after the Donald, which was a hit job. I mean, uh, we know hitmen. Hey, we're from Bloomfield Avenue. We know, we know the history of some great hitmen. Mitt Romney's not it. So he I gets Romney up. say that four years ago when he was begging exactly. for an endorsement. But Please. Go ahead. Please. No, so then, then Romney's in. Uh, this is when I was I'm, I'm on my way to Fox, and I see this unfold. Then, as I sit down with uh, Mr. Cavuto there, who comes on? Governor Christie does a press conference. This was last Thursday. The, now, was that orchestrated? Do you think that Donald called? And I thought maybe the Donald called Chris said, "Look, I need a little distraction. I'm going to do a press conference in Maine." Remember, we diverted his plane to Maine. Donald Trump did and did an hour. Uh, uh, you know, it was a rally right. up there. I wonder. Do you think they talk like that? That seems it was brilliant politics. And I'm thinking that maybe the Donald said, Chris, I need you up front. I need you to take it, distract it a little bit. I'll finish it up in Maine, and then we'll do the debates at night. I wonder if they work like that. Do you think they're that close? I think they talk. I think they have a, a solid relationship, um, which is hard to have. Let's just say with Donald Trump, I think it's very difficult to have a relationship where um, he appreciates what you have to say. And I think it was very difficult for the governor to be standing behind Trump the night of uh, Super Tuesday. It was difficult. I don't care what anyone says. And I, and, I, yeah. and I know the governor was saying I was just standing there, but the reality is it had to be difficult. Um, the armchair psychologists and psychiatrists were going too far with that. But the bottom line is the governor decided, in my opinion, that he was coming back to New Jersey to say, okay, listen, you've got concerns? I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Now, ask me anything you want for the next, I don't care how many hours it is. And he waited until some of the media crew, the camera crews, actually got so bored with the press conference, <laughs> they had no, many, no more questions and they actually left. Here's my point, Joe. Christie decided that on his own. Like him or not, yeah. he is a political master when it yeah. comes to him being true. in the corner. That and he true. answered every question. Yeah. And now yeah. you're not going to hear it anymore. There's nothing yeah. left to ask him about whether he's staying or not. You may disagree with what he does or doesn't do in Trenton, but he's there, and there was nothing left to ask, Joe. That wasn't Trump. That was Chris Christie. Uh, yeah, My I opinion. hear you. I know, but you know, and too, uh, you're, you're like I am, you know, being a th through, through, through Jersey guy. I know you're on PBS nationally, but you know, you, get, you, you can't forget your roots. And that's the strength, I think, of this region. And when they started making fun of the governor, when he was behind, uh, Donald Trump, and, and it was very funny with the Kirby. Yeah, your friends on SNL were not yeah. very nice. That's no, all no, but it was, it, I know, I know, but, and you gotta laugh, but. Why don't you I, make a call, Joe? Why don't I you make a call to your friends? I gotta tell you, really, but, they're, 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 you, they're, they're, they're a little out of line. But I was a little offended that they picked on the New Jersey governor because it was a Jersey thing, and they went up. I thought a little too far on that, you and that's Bobby what. Bobby Moynihan, a little, you know. Very funny guy, by the way. Bobby was. <laughs> it's so hysterical. But you think the governor? But you got the Kirby enthusiasm thing, and I'm talking about on Twitter when uh, Christie was behind Governor Christie was behind Donald Trump, and then he's just standing there. And you know what, Steve? Next time you talk to Chris, your friend Chris, tell him to just get out of camera range, stay a little to the to his right, and out of the camera range, and they I won't. Had it, my own thoughts. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, Joe. I had my yeah. own thoughts about how to handle the nonverbals. Let's just say. And I don't think Christie was even thinking. I don't think he was all that concerned about it. And yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just say if he could do it again, he'd probably get out of range. You wouldn't even think much about it. Or yep, he'd, yep, yep, yep. he'd have a different face on. But I think he was just not that aware. And the bottom line is the lesson for everyone is that when you're, quote, in a number two position and you're not the alpha male 
female, whatever, out front, you actually have to be that conscious of what you're doing and what yeah, you're man. not doing. Yeah. And that's how complicated the communication game is. That and really the point is. is, it's easy for us to sit there and analyze it. Mm -hmm. It's harder to be in that role. you got to read Lessons in it's Leadership. Not a number two. Le I'm that's sorry, very I'm true. my book while I interrupt it. Go ahead. Le <laughs> Lessons in Leadership, Steve Automato, PBS anchor, uh, New Jersey political analyst, and our dear friend. And thanks for always sitting in with, with us and for us and with the guys. You're part of the family, Steve. We appreciate that more than we could tell you. And uh, everything else good in your life? We're going to go to Kevin McCullough now. Kevin's going to tell me how great Ted Cruz is. But I wanted to make sure we brought Steve on the air. All good in your life? You're still married and everything, right, Steve? I don't <laughs> My wife, Jennifer... <laughs> I know you're listening. Ignore our friend Joe. And by the way, I know we were going to hook him up with one of your friends. Oh, that come call, on man. now. Come Can't on now. I call, Jen. What's the, what's the age range? What's the, Steve, what's the age range? The better question is, what school does she go to? Wait, wait, no, stop. Right. What's the age range of the hookup? 18 to 40. What, 18 to, yeah, all right. That's good. No, I'm, trying, I'm in rehab. He gets nervous over 25, Steve. Forget it. <laughs> I need it. But I'm, I'm like, I got to go with the rehab. I'm pushing towards 40. Come on, I got to do this. I'm, I got to. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. I'll tell you like Rodney said. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. I Steve, love we love you. you. We'll I talk to you. you soon. Have a great day. Give my love to everybody. Give your love to the family, and we'll talk to you soon, Steve. Adubato. Take care. Thank, bye -bye. Thanks so much. 738 with Piscopo in the morning.